Hi everyone, today we're going to learn some CSS Flexbox properties by playing this game Flexbox Froggy. So for the first level, we have to move this frog so that it's on top of the lily pad. And the way we can do that is by using the justify content property, which will align flex items along the main axis. And in our current configuration, the main axis is the horizontal one. We can do justify content. And then, and over here we have a list of the accepted values for justify content. And we can see that flex start aligns the item along the left side of the container, which is also the default value, so that's where the frog already is. But flex end will align it to the right side of the container, which is where we want it. So we can just do flex end. So now we're going to move these frogs to their matching lily pads using justify content again. But in this case, we're not going to use flex start or flex end because the lily pads are on neither corner, but we're going to use flex center because we want to align the frogs at the center of the container where the lily pads are. So justify content center. This time we're going to be using one of these values for justify content. So we can see the difference here. A space between displays items with equal space between them, while space around displays items with equal space around them. So, so let's observe the difference between those two. So justify content, space between. We can see that there's an equal space between all of the frog elements. However, there's not a lot of space between the frog and the border of the container. So if we do space around, we get these frogs evenly distributed with equal space around them. So now we're going to use justify content to position the frogs onto the lily pads with equal space between them. So we can use justify content. With space between. So now we're going to use the property align items, which aligns flex items along the cross axis. So for our current configuration, we have the main axis as horizontal and the cross axis as vertical. So over here, we have a list of acceptable values for align items. And we know that we want to push these frogs down to the bottom of the container so that they're on the lily pads. So we can use flex end to align items to the bottom of the container. So align items flex and so now we're going to use a combination of justify content and align items in order to move this frog to the center of the flex box so let's start with justify content so we know that this is going to align along the main axis, and the current main axis is the horizontal one. So we want to align it along the center. Now we're going to use align items to align it along the cross axis, the vertical one. And we also know that we want that to be aligned along the center of the cross axis. So align items center. So now we're going to use justify content and align items together to move these frogs to the bottom of these lily pads, which are spaced out. So let's use align items to move them to the bottom of the flex box by doing align items flex end. 
And then we're going to use justify content to put equal space around the items. So now we're going to use the flex direction property in order to order the flex items in a way that matches the order of these lily pads. So we can see the, val the acceptable values for flex direction here. So row is the default and the items are currently placed in a row. Row reverse will place the items opposite to the text direction. And that is exactly what we need. We need this frog here. So flex direction. So now we're going to help the frogs find their column of lily pads using flex direction. And flex direction defines the direction of the main axis for us. So by default, it is row, which is the horizontal axis. But if we change it to column or column reverse, we'll have the main axis set as the vertical one. So we can do flex direction, column, and just have them be in a column formation. So for this level, we'll be using both flex direction and justify content to align the frogs. We see that the green frog is on the red lily pad, while the red frog is on the green lily pad. So if we use the value of row reverse, we will get the frogs to appear in their reverse order, which is what we need. So since we set the flex direction to row reverse, the frogs are being aligned in respect to the right side instead of the left side as they were previously. So in order to push them over to the left side, we're going to use justify content and we're going to use the value of flex end because since we used row reverse, the end of the flex box will actually be the left side. So now we're going to use both flex direction and justify content to get these frogs to their lily pads. So we know that the flex direction is going to be a column. And there is a note here that says, notice that when the flex direction is a column, justify content changes the vertical and align items the horizontal. So we can sort of check that out by doing align items center and we can see the items move. So that just sort of is telling us to take notes of what axis these properties are working on. So justify content is working along the main axis, which is currently the vertical one and align items is working along cross axis, which is currently the horizontal one. So the other property we're going to use is justify content and we want to move the frogs to flex end. So now we're going to use both flex direction and justify content to help the frogs move to their lily pads. So let's define the direction of the main axis by using flex direction. So we, we know we want it to be along the vertical axis, but we can also take note that the green frog is not matching its current lily pad. So we can see that we want the in reverse order. So flex direction, column reverse. We need the content to be spaced out, but are we using space between or space around? Well, we're definitely using space between because there is an equal amount of space between the lily pads, but not around the lily pads. So justify content space between.
So now we're going to help the frogs find their lily pads using flex direction, justify content, and align items. So let's define the direction of the main axis using flex direction. So we know that we're going to be working with the horizontal one, but we do see that we need it to be in reverse. So flex direction, row reverse. So the main axis being the horizontal one, we know we want the items to be aligned along the center of the horizontal axis. So we'll do that by doing justify content center. So now align items will move things along our cross axis. Our cross axis is the vertical one, and we know we want these items to be aligned along the end of that vertical axis. So we'll do align items. Flex end. So now we're going to use the order property to align an individual element. We're only going to be aligning the yellow frog. Order can be used to define the order in which an element appears in a list of items. By default, the order is zero. Uh, if we did order negative one, we'll have it appear in the very front because the default is zero, so negative one will be before that. One, everything else is set to zero, so it just goes to the back. Okay, so now we're going to use order again, except this time we're dealing with the red one. So let's see, order. So all of these elements currently have an order of zero, but we, we know we want the red one to come before everything. To get an element to be before elements of an order of zero, we have to set the order to something negative. So order negative one. So now we're going to use the property of align self to align this yellow frog. Align self accepts the same values as align items, except this property is applied to an individual item. So the individual item here is just going to be the yellow frog, so dot yellow. So we're going to do align self. And we know that we want to push it to the flex end. So now we're going to use a combination of order and align self to help the frogs move to their lily pad. So we'll be using order and align self to work with the elements of a yellow class, so the yellow frogs. So the first thing we notice is that the order of the yellow frogs should come after the green frogs so that they can line up with the yellow lily pads at the end. So let's set the order to one so that they're pushed to the back and then align self. So align self is working with our cross axis, which here is the vertical axis. So we know that we want them to be at the flex end of that. So there we go. Okay, so now moving on, we're going to learn about the flex wrap property, which specifies whether flex items are forced on a single line or can be wrapped on multiple lines. So by default, Flexbox uses no wrap, which puts all of the items on the same line. But if we set it to wrap, the items that don't fit on that line will simply go to the next one, which is what you see happening down here. We're going to use flex direction and flex wrap to help this army of frogs get on their proper lily pads. So flex direction. We know that we want a column rotation, but not everyone on the same line, um, which is what we'll use flex wrap for. We'll set it to wrap so that the items don't force themselves on the same line. Instead of writing out flex direction and flex wrap, we can just use the shorthand property flex flow, which will let us assign values to both of those like this. So flex flow. Let's think about our flex direction. So we definitely want the main axis to be the vertical one. So we want columns. 
so flex flow column for our flex direction and then flex wrap so we want the items to wrap instead of be forced on the same line so for this level we want to find a way to sort of get rid of this additional space that we have between these frogs and we're told that we can use this property called align content to set how lines are spaced apart from each other, which is exactly what we need to do. We need to sort of cancel out the space. And the first one is flex start, which will have the lines packed at the top of the container, which is what we want. And we can see that the default value is stretch. So this is what is currently happening with the lines. They're stretched to fit the container. So there is one thing to note, align content determines the spacing between the lines, while align items determines the space of the items. So to be very clear, we're just messing with the space, we're not messing with the items themselves. So align content. Flex start. So we're going to use align content to get rid of the spaces between these frogs. So we're going to define the lines of the flexbox along the end of the container. Now we're going to use flex direction and align content. Let's start with flex direction. We know that we want the main axis to be the cross axis because we want the frogs to match the column alignment of these lily pads. So flex direction column. Oh, but we also see that we want that to be reverse. And align content will let us align the container lines in the flex box. So we know that we want the container lines to be along the middle. So center, align content center. So now for our final level, we're going to use all of the CSS properties that we learned. So the first thing we can observe is that the current flex direction is set to row, um, but we want to change it over to column so that the frogs can match the lily pad formation. So flex direction, column. And we can also notice that we'd want the column to be reversed so that the red frog is at the very end instead of the very beginning. So the next thing that I notice is that all these frogs are on the same line. They're compressed in size and it doesn't match the size of the lily pads. So we want to use flex wrap in order to say that the items can be wrapped along multiple lines. So flex wrap. So there's also this value called reverse for flex wrap. It will reverse the alignment of the flex end and flex start. So Right now the flex start is here and the flex end is here, but if we wanted to reverse those, we could set flex wrap to wrap reverse. So we also notice that there's not enough space between these two columns of frogs. Um, so what we can do is use align content to define the spacing of the container lines, and we can set that to space between. The last thing for us to do is just move these frogs up. So we can use justify content for that because that aligns flex items along the main axis. So we can do justify content, center, and so that's everything.